start with an opening statement from the two of you, and then we'll open it up for questions. Congratulations to you both. Mm -hmm. uh, opening statement, we are absolutely thrilled um, to, to, to bring a trophy back to Wake Forest University and the community there in Winston-Salem. And uh, what better way to do it than to have Amelia Miliacha, who came back her sixth year, um, to be sitting beside me and, and sharing that experience with me. Yeah, it, it really is an amazing feeling. I mean, you just feel so good because we have such a special community at Wake Forest. There's There were so many supporters. I have so many messages from people that I don't know that are just affiliated with Wake. And so it just feels so good to have made my teammates proud, my coaches proud, and everyone in the Wake family who came and watched today, who watched on TV. It just feels amazing. Our message this morning we were going over our book this morning and I had everyone read all of the, the text messages that they had received, not all of them, but some of them um, from our community back at home. And uh, just to, to reiterate, we have, a, it's, we have a special place at Wake Forest and the community and, and the interest that they have in our golf programs. And that was our message going out there. And, um, and yeah, yeah, just mm -hmm. think of all the people that are watching us. Yeah. So if you want to take yourself off mute and feel free to answer any questions, we'll start with John Dell. Amelia, you talked uh, about coming back and winning the national championship. You were there, the only player left that was in there in 2019 when you lost to Duke. What kind of was the feeling, obviously, from back then? Did, did you think about that a lot today, maybe? Honestly, I didn't think about it much just because, I mean – we did everything we could then and it just didn't go our way on that 20th hole. But I don't know, there was something different that I felt about this week. Like we had all been, we've all been playing really, really good golf, just starting, you know, ACC's region, starting postseason, we were just all coming into form and I don't know, we've just had really good vibes uh, the, these last couple of days. And so I was just really motivated myself knowing that I was the first one out there. I just, I really wanted to get up early and just have everyone be comfortable that I was in control of my match. And it was nice to have Ryan there on my last couple of holes and literally felt so good when, when uh, the putt on 16 was conceded. And Kim, one thing about the veteran leadership, you had a lot of veterans. I mean, how key was that this season? To win championships, you need to have great leaders. And and we had a lot of great leaders. We had Amelia Miliacha, we had Lauren Walsh, we had Rachel Keene, and then even our, our younger ones, um, you've just seen them mature and grow and um and follow their lead. And uh and so um to have that type of leadership just allows uh, Ryan and I to coach because we got other people taking care of the other stuff. Les Johns, go ahead. Yeah, Kim uh, and Amelia, congratulations, of course. Um, what was the key on day three to kind of, I guess, right the ship when when things got a little rocky there, you know, on the front, front nine holes and, and to keep yourselves in position to make this run the last four or five days? Because that could have spiraled. It could it not have. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it could have spiraled maybe with a different group. But this group is so mature. They've played um, – events, uh, high caliber, caliber international, national events. And so they realize that sometimes uh, the wheels are going to start to fall off and they have to realize real quick how to get that going again. And so um, I think with this group, um, it didn't shake them. Uh, they've all been there before and they know how to uh, put a shot behind them, let the past be passed and move on to the, to, to the next shot at hand. And um, so I think with this group, uh, they did it themselves and and they were able to steady the ship through experience. Yeah, I think one thing that Kim and Ryan always say is that adversity will happen. You can't go and play around a round of golf and and hope that you're never going to hit a bad shot or, you know, something's you're, you're never going to get a bad bounce. Like you're going to hit a bad shot at some point. You're going to get a bad bounce, but you might get multiple, but it's you can only control how you react to it. So I think that's why you know, that's why one, we didn't get, you know, more than two down in any of our matches. And also why, you know, if we bogey the first three holes, we know that that's not a pattern. We can go out and, and birdie the next three. So I think that mindset that we've been taught um, 
just really helped on, on that day three. Todd Gibson, go ahead. Hey, Amelia, Todd Gibson, the CBS 17 out of Raleigh. I got to see you as a freshman winning a state championship at Athens Drive High School. I mean, how did that kind of set you off to where you are right now, that event? Yeah, I mean, winning a state championship is such a great title to have. And I think playing that one year of high school golf just really gave me confidence. I mean, my mom always told me um, that the biggest way to gain confidence is winning. And um, high school golf really set me up for that. I, I've won a lot of matches and to get the state title, just real and knowing that I was expected to win and then go out and win just really showed that I could handle that kind of pressure and, and that kind of expectation. And it's just something that I've been able to be more comfortable with the more I've been, been expected to do stuff, just go, to go out and, and play my game and, and be able to perform. And that, that was individual. Now you win w with your buddies, a national championship. Just how cool is that? It's way better than winning by yourself. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's so cool. I'm, I'm so happy. And it's just, when you look back on it, it's just every, you think back to every single time you've been frustrated or you're out, you got on the range. Um, I mean, I remember in the Bahamas, Kim and I were on the range for like two hours trying to figure stuff out. And you just think back to all those moments and it's, it's all worth it. Every, every single day of, of struggle is worth it for this kind of success that rarely anyone gets. I mean, just Thanks. think about the memory when you said that, think about the memory that they're going to be able to tell their friends and their family and their kids forever and ever and ever and have this group of people around them. I mean, that's just a memory that, that you can't make up. <laughs> Congratulations guys. Thank you. Essex there, go ahead. First off, congratulations. Um, this is for, for both of y'all just for, for those who don't, you know, consistently follow college golf, seven rounds in six days, Talk about the the grit and determination that goes into, you know, performing at a high level for that period of time to win. Um, it, it yeah, it even starts before that. So you know, we've played um, a full fall season. Golf is full all, all year around. So you play a fall season, you play play a spring season, and then when it comes down to postseason, our ACC days are long. Then after ACCs, it takes you a while to get to region. Or then you go to regionals, and you have to, you know, get out of the region before you can get to the to the NCAA championship. And then once you're at the NCAA championship, you have to make the top 15. Then you have to make the top eight, and then you have to continue to advance. So it's just a really, really long journey um, where the stars have to line up. You have to have a little bit of luck go your way. Um, it helps when you have a, a really nice team of good players, um, helps with that luck a little bit. Um, but it's a long journey from um, not just the start of this tournament, um, but, but, but in the fall and, and way back in the spring. Yeah, and I would say when you're playing golf, you're focused on every shot at hand. But when you're thinking about playing a long week, we were always thinking to the next day. So we were eating for tomorrow. We were drinking for tomorrow. So everything was to prepare us for tomorrow. That's kind of was the message all week that um, Kim and Ryan were telling us. And uh, we actually, I don't know if you told anyone this, but at 8 p.m. yesterday, we were in the corner of the pool. Our, our kind of team management had bought these kiddie pools and filled it with ice. And we were all taking ice baths like in the middle of the pool to recover our legs. And we all felt great. Like after we were doing like ice and then hot tub and reverse, we're like, we're not going to say anything until after. So no one gets our idea. No, but uh, so yeah, I, in kiddie pool. Yeah, we like, were in we kiddie pool. Walmart, <laughs> at Walmart. That so Walmart. So really funny. yeah, but just when it comes to how do you prepare for a long week, it's all about recovery. Um, every do everything you can control to prepare and have the same kind of energy for the next day. Jalen Gilkey, go ahead. Oh uh, yes, congratulations, ladies. This question is for you, Coach. Um, standing there between sixteen and seventeen, as things are kind of winding down. And you see Lauren kind of throw that dart in there. Um, just kind of walk me through what your thought process was, how you guys were feeling. And uh, once those putts were conceded on 16, just what, what was that feeling like? I know you guys have been so close winning ACC regular season titles, tournament titles, building up and leading up to this falling short before at this point. So just the, kind of that culmination of your entire time at Wake so far. 
Yeah, I mean, I would say that I was a little less stressed than I was in 2019 because it was like extra holes. So it was literally like do or die. So because Lauren was up, Mimi was up, I felt good, even though I was like, okay, I felt, okay, it's only a matter of when, because I like 100% believe that both of them would be able to close it out. Um, but I was looking on the TV because I could, I was in, in the middle trying to see, okay, Mimi's in the fairway, Lauren's about to hit. So I was looking at this TV screen that was behind 15 green and we were watching it and we we're like, oh my God, it looks good. It looks good. And so we were screaming so loud and then we're like, okay. And then we knew that Brie was in the right rough because she had hit first. So obviously Brie was going to need to chip in and Lauren make for us, for us to, you know, close it out, which was going to be maybe difficult. So, okay, Lauren could clinch it. And so we just sprinted down to the green and it was just so cool. I mean, being a senior, like her last, her last college tournament to be able to clinch that. I mean, she's come so close to winning herself individually. And I know like she, she could have won this week individually too. So to be able to, you know, win the whole thing as a team, I think it's, I think it's worth it. <laughs> Les Johns. Coach, just how big was Mimi's run through the middle of the, of, the, of, of the round today in helping not only gain an advantage in that particular match, but also just calming everybody and know there's several paths to victory out there, right? Um, you know, I think that's huge. I'm not quite sure if everyone is aware of it at the moment that they're playing, but as a, as a coaching staff, um, when Mimi got back to tie, um, she was tied and it was funny cause I was able to go in there, um, which was the second time I did this yesterday. And I said, Mimi, it looks like we're going to need one more match. Cause I felt pretty confident, um, that Amelia, that she was about to close out and Lauren, um, uh, Rachel was quite a bit up. Um, but Lauren still had some holes left, even though that she was up, but I did go up to Mimi just to say, Hey, we need one more match, whether it's L dub or whether it's you. And, um, you know, and she really responds to that. So as soon as I mentioned that, she went on a run and um, played those holes phenomenally and ended up two up going into into 17 and then hit that close to 17 as well. So it's a comfort level. Um, you know, what's really neat as a coach is to, to know that you can go into somebody, say something, and then they respond. And I've just noticed with Mimi throughout this whole tournament, that I've been able to go into her and she's been able to respond with what we needed. Um, and that just shows that you have control of your golf game. Um, and so she's been, a, I would say, a big asset um, to our uh, victory here. And, um, you know, I, I think it's going to lead for a lot of confidence for her mm -hmm. uh, for next year and in, in her golf career as well. And we'll finish up with John Dell. Yeah, Kim, I know um, you were pretty close with Coach Daly when you took over and everything, and you kept her in the program and helping kind of kind of a uh, retired guru coach. But did you think about her a little bit when you guys won that title? I know she tried and tried and, and came close a few times. A hundred percent. And she's out here with us. And so um, it, it, it's it's always wonderful when she's here. Um, it reminds all of us of the history of the, the program. Um, it reminds us of, um, you know, our task at hand. And uh, she's been on my speed dial since I've been here. Um, she's always, uh, she's at the facility quite a bit, always someone I can talk to and get advice uh, with. Um, and it's just, it's just outstanding to have a, uh, someone to look up to, a mentor that I've had, and a best friend in Coach Daly. And we just appreciate that that she's still still around every single time that we're here because um, she's, part, she's part of us. She's part of us. Congrats, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats, Thank you. guys. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks, Will.